Yeah, uh, well, you have to sit in there like, look, you have to go to bed tonight at 10 o'clock, I'll let my grandma wrap you because I've got a film to watch. That's showing tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll go down well. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I've, I've been, I've been doing right, Bob. Tonight, today, uh, I have actually, I've, I've actually unplugged the uh, aerial cable from TV, well, the, the extension, because uh, at, at the moment I am, uh, say, we, uh, we don't really watch. Um, normal TV uh, I ain't heard anything back well I've heard a bad couple of responses but nothing finalised from TV licensing people but we went to, we visited a friend of hers um, Polish family that lived not far from Texaco garage in garden under Quiver and it actually shared me air from which was quite good oh you know, in garden, COVID restrictions in place and all that. And show me um, what they pay. It's something like, well, a bit like mine, really, quart quarterly. So it's like every three months. And, and they're paying like, over the year, it works out at 160 quid. It staggered me, and I uh, was all last. Says, no, it's it's not worth it, Gusha. It'll be sixty quid just to watch. Because it's just for BBC, isn't it? So the boy, it's 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 pay for BBC TV and radio and that. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't watch any other live TV like the commercial stations, which don't come under the BBC license, like ITV and Channel Four. So, I'm like, well, I'll, I'll unplug cable today, uh, and then there's no temptation to um, to do it. So, but to, tomorrow, so Gush is back at bakery, but in a different room on light duties. Um, she's handled it, I say, quite well, really, because uh, before she will go into pieces. Um, I mean, I'm 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 glad that the um, waiting for that bastard letters of her, but my car's in for service an MOT tomorrow. Now, I'm hoping, like last year, uh, it it comes out all right. If it does, then I'm going to treat myself to. Well, I, I'll try and give you a clue. It's from 1983. It's uh, this film director's last film before he decided to pack it all in and go and renovate theatres and old cinemas. And it's about an author that uh, is a challenge with his publisher they have a bet that he he can write a book uh, in a short amount of time uh, a challenge so it goes en route uh, to this house yeah gets lost Calls at this railway station, meets a couple. Uh, one of them is the gorgeous Julie P. Is good. And he goes to his house and is there with his typewriter. It's dark and gloomy and spooky and all that. And then they turn up because they got lost and it's raining and all that. Basically, it's a film by Pete Walker. Yeah. It stars Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, John Carradine, who played R. Chetwin Hayes in Monster Club, uh, Christopher Lee, 
Sheila Keith from House of Whip Cord and Frightmare and one episode of Never the Twain. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's an episode where Oliver Smallbridge is in love with a woman old enough to be his daughter, posh woman. And the prospective mother-in-law turns up in the Rolls Royce. He remembers that uh, Sam and Peel remembers the name. Yeah. And something happens where he comes out of Oliver Smodrick's house wearing this certain tie from a post school. And the the chauffeur questions him and it's it gives his answers like even though I don't realise it that, that the chauffeur thinks he's Oliver Smallbridge. So Shilly Keith comes out and sees the tie and goes, Yes. If you've been to that school um Yeah, you'll do. Well she turns up again and realises that He's, he isn't Oliver Smallbridge. Uh, the 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 mar the marriage is off, so they try and um, get her to elope, and they go to the house, go back go into window. Uh, something happens where they have to leave, and uh, but next day, Donald uh, Sam Peel turns up and says, "Bloody hell, that was a close shave." When he says, "Where were you?" Basically, he stayed behind in her bedroom and gave her one. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, it's House of Long Shadows. Um, I've, I've had a look around and it's like... Uh, it's not... Well, I saw about eight quid, but when I saw the reviews, two out, two out of five, I thought... Nah. So... I saw one for about 20 quid, and apparently it includes um, audio commentary with um, Pete Walker and a, a making of. So I'm assuming there'll be archival footage of on set and or, or talks with the surviving cast, which is probably. Well, it depends when it was filmed. Maybe Christopher Lee. Julie P is good. But I think majority at cast, uh, excluding the man who was the author, who's probably the, the author, are probably all dead by now. But uh, so you you've ordered two, you've secured, as you put it, two more films. Enlighten me, what are they again? Satanic Rites of Dracula and Revenge of Frankenstein. Are you going for all the Frankensteins? No, only going to miss the one, the last one, like Stan, Mozart of Vermeil. Well, I personally would go for all all of them. I mean, you, um, um, the one that I haven't got is the last one from nineteen seventy four, which is Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Which I've got to say is the worst monster of any Frankenstein's that I've ever seen. It, it's, I think it's David Prowse, aka Darth Vader, who was in this. I can't describe it. It's like um, it's like a a, a bold. A bald-headed, hairy gorilla 
on steroids. That's that's what it looks like, a, a big hairy gorilla, with a sh with a bald head, on steroids. I mean, I I thought the Frankenstein's monster, that featured in the standalone film, which also stars Peter Woodthorpe. Um, the Evil of Frankenstein. That's a standalone film. I recommend that because it's it's not a sequel, it's not a prequel. It's like Brides of Dracula. It's got nothing to do with the films well the film before it or the films after it. It's a standalone film. Um I mean the monster evil of Frankenstein, it's like its head is being chiseled out of rock using a a, a ruler. It, it's just like a imagine a block of stone and and they've chiselled some kind of eye out of it and, and and a thing, but it still looks like a block of stone, but with like eyes and a nose. I mean, it's, it, apparently that's the closest thing to Boris Karloff's monster. Prior to that, they were scared of doing anything else because they were being threatened with copyright or something, because they couldn't copy or mimic in any shape or form. The one that Boris Carlos did for Universal. But it's just hideous. I think the only the only monster that looks like a human was the one featured in Revenge of Frankenstein. Michael Gwynn. Um, who plays the priest in... Uh, Scars of Dracula. The one with Dennis Waterman and um, a bit Margaret Nolan. Nice tits. But isn't it strange how some of these films? Um. I mean, uh, well, I'll give you an example and let me know what you think. Two years ago, at your Sainsbury's, Halloween, um, at the back, where the, near to where the TVs are, was a cardboard cutout stand. Loads of DVDs for three pound a pop. I couldn't believe my luck. I got Frankenstein must be destroyed. Got um, demons of the demons of the uh, night of the demon. I got Madhouse with Vincent Price. Taste the blood of Dracula. Uh, I got Vampire Circus, but I I didn't get I just did not did not get that film. It was it wasn't even that good, but people raved about it. All for three pound a piece. Then you get like the the Satanic Rites of Dracula, which how much did you pay for yours? <sighs> Sixteen pound fifty. Yeah, well. I don't know the one I got. Um, it's coming. It's coming from Germany. Mm. Funny enough, that that's um, that's where the cheap, the cheaper one of uh, the House of Long Shadows was from Germany. It wasn't on eBay. It was some something called E Crater. Um, which is obviously some kind of eBay ripoff, but I could I could see it got two stars out of five, so I'm like, oh, and then, but after that you look at about eighteen quid, twenty quid for a brand new copy of it, um, 
bloody Frankenstein and the monster from hell from 1974 is no exception it's uh, I mean the one I saw was about 18 quid and that and, and five pound of that was post and packaging I thought you can bollocks I ain't paying that money bloody bloody joke So I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna have a look at what I need to get. I, I don't think I need all that much really, but I do want Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. I've got all the Frankenstein's. I've got all the Draculas, apart from the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Oh, God! Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Okay, I forgot on that one. But that's another one. Buddy, 15, 16, 18, 20 bastard quid. You can't make it up, can you? The, the price difference between me getting Taste of the Dracula for £3. Okay, it's a no frills version. It's just the film and maybe the trailer. But yet, at the time, the Satanic Rights of Dracula, one of the weakest of the lot was like some like 20 odd quid 25 quid at the time you can't make it up I mean I must get um, there this tight rats of Dracula it was like 2 for 25 quid blu-ray now no that my Blu-rays are all right now, no no more. I've ended up in the skip. Not the heavy. Yeah, you 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 were you were wait. Just just me. Yeah, you were you were waiting if you oh. Right. Now, I did I did share this to you on Facebook the other day, so you might be you know what I'm on about. Right, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson. Now, as you know, I'll touch before I get to the question. As we, well, you know, the story. Uh, mentioned it many, many, many times now. I saw the first two at the cinema. Uh, both in Sheffield. Both times, I had an ass before the film started. After the film finished. I had no ass. You know, there was no feeling, right? So this is obviously the theatrical versions. Roll on a few years. Never really pursued it any further. Never saw the third Lord of the Rings films. Thought nothing of it. Till, I don't know, sometime... Uh, a year and a half ago, two year ago, I well, you know the tale. It's not, it's not new news. I'm in your Sainsbury's, and I see the two Blu-ray versions, two for twenty-five pounds. Please, as punch, chuffed as a man who's just bought the winning lottery ticket. We finish our shopping, and I go home, cock a hoop with joy. Time to revisit the films that I remember and see the films that I never got to see. Blah, blah, blah. You rightfully put, recommend that I watch The Hobbit first. Uh, because it's 
the story before the main story. For some reason, Peter Jackson did it as Spout Face. Maybe for copyright reasons, I don't know. And just um, as I, I watched the first one, you enlightened me that, uh, you know, I could have the Japanese micro penis version. Um, which I thought, if it's anything like Robocop and Commando, if it's on a matter of 20 seconds or 30 seconds or 43 seconds, it's neither here nor there. But it wasn't until obviously you mentioned more so L O T R that the scenes repatriated, um, especially for the last one, could be anything up to like 50 minutes plus. Yeah. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? <laughs> and then the others, you know, 40 odd minutes plus, whatever. But, but is it how, how long for the three Lord of the Rings in total, how much added footage is added to the, to the Lord of the Rings trilogy? About two hours. More than two Jesus. hours, surely. I don't know really. Well, without without referencing to Wikipedia, I think it says more than two and a half hours or three hours. But without without, without referencing Wikipedia, I think the Hobbit is less so. Probably maybe twenty minutes of extra footage and um. Obviously, see, my he decided to split it into three films, even though the it's a shorter story. So he did a lot of padding, and I mean this this leads then onto the the part the prequel before the question. As you know, it was uh, it was actually the Lord of the Rings. Or was it Lord of the Rings or was it the Hobbit? No, it was Lord of the Rings. Disc one. Which, again, this is old news. I had playing issues with disc one of the Fellowship of the Ring at the Prancing Pony scene. Hello there, young sir. We're at the Gandalf the Grey. Oh, I've seen him. Oh, well, you got a pint there. Eh? It, it, it jumped from him being greeted by the innkeeper to suddenly they're all at the table getting pissed up on ale. Uh, and you got that Berg Mortensen character with his hood up, keep an eye on him. But, uh, you know, took it out, wiped it, took it out, wiped it, looked under the lamp. A, a minute half a millimeter flesh wound on it, nothing much. Not even, not even a, a scratch, just like a scuff. Hello there, young sir. And how can I help you? Oh, a hobbit. We have to go off the great. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, well, as you know, you know the tale. I then order a cheap replacement off of eBay, which um, you lose the excellent home screen, which featured uh, the theme, the like the chiller music with a, a voice on by uh, Ian McKellen, and like a virtual uh, invisible camera going into the Hobbiton town, ha Bilbo Baggins's house. Going through the rooms, you can hear various sounds. Oh, brilliant! And then bugger me, the first film again of The Hobbit, an unexpected journey. Um, the defy. It, it was always at the scene, which I think is chapter twenty, the defiler. Will you do you want a bird? Oxhead. 
<laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Same thing again. Take it out, look it on that lamp, little scuff mark, N nothing to worry about, or so forth. Well, you know what happened to him? They went in the bin. <laughs> Followed by Curse of the Crimson Altar. <laughs> Which cost me about 10 quid. And then the absolute kick in the bollocks. Tales of Witness Madness. <laughs> Which cost me, I think, six quid. But when it but when it got to like say commando starting to play up and Britannia Hospital never really playing, I didn't chuck that because Britannia Hospital limited edition blue where we had thirty page booklet, that was sixteen bastard quid. Uh and then we then when bloody there's me thinking it's bloody horror hospital blue it's playing up and there's me like I said begging you for my old copy back which turns out that and uh, then you said, "Oh, what if it, now you had that new that new player? Uh, if it plays all right, you bet you uh, let me know, and and I'll and I will." <laughs> right. So it leads up t to the question. I saw this article on Twitter or Buzzfeed or whatever that. This reviewer says, out of the two versions, he prefers the theatrical version. And apparently, Peter Jackson is in agreement. He said, um, for, for, because I always thought that the reason why he made the cuts was, um, to keep the cinemas happy. You know what I mean? If the film's too long, people might lose interest. I thought but that's the reason why he, he did, the, especially in The Lord of the Rings, huge cuts. And he's, in his panel, he's close to saying, the reason why I put the deleted footage in, um, was to kind of please the fans that kind of like that kind of thing. But for me, the definitive version of how I saw Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit is the one that come out at the cinema. Um, now, you have probably viewed both versions. In your honest opinion... <coughs> We'll start with The Hobbit. I'll start with The Hobbit and then go to Lord of the Rings. Which version do you like the best and why compared to the one that you, you, you have rejected? Hobbit. Yeah. So we'll start with The Hobbit. Yeah, okay. Extended because that's all I have. I haven't got the standard version. Mm. So have you have you seen the theatrical versions at all? No. Well. Well, to be fair, I know the Hobbit is the shorter of the additional footage. Even though I did briefly have it, had it, I should say, till I got rid and got the stupendous 30 disc edition. 30 discs. Bloody hell. Um, uh, hang on. Oh, Jesus. Settle that fast with my control. Oh. 
Right. Okay, so this, as you can see, is the big bastard um, Extraordinary Middle Earth Trilogies from beginning to end. So, how do I get this out now? That's it. So, so here, here we have um, so here's all so we'll start with oh a booklet here what's this one from oh it's, it's about the thingy about the that's Hobbit Hobbit Right, so we've got right, the Hobbit on un un unextended journey. So this has four discs. One is Blu-ray extended edition. The uh, second one is special features. Three is um, appendices, parts. So so that's four discs. Uh, the other, the other disc, yeah. Right, so that's that one. Uh, this is the third one, Battle of Five Armies. Uh, four discs. That's eight. Uh, number two. The Desolation of Smog. Another four discs. So that's twelve. Um, the Fellowship of the Ring is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six discs. So that's eighteen. Which is two, three, four, five, six. That's six discs. Two towers with six discs, so obviously, two discs are films, um, and the rest the behind the scenes stuff, appendices, all the bed, all the thingy. So, uh, Fellowship, Return of the King, two towers. So that that's Lord that's Lord of the Rings. So that, that's Lord of the Rings. That's uh, six twelve. That's eighteen discs. Eighteen discs. Oh, obviously, out of which six of them are the films. And your, your Hobbit is 12 discs, of which three of them are filmed. I even, I haven't even made a single dent on the extras. Um... How much that that bastard? How much those six films? How much I paid for them from the tactical versions at Sainsbury's to get in this thirty disc extravaganza here in my hand? This great big hulking box of thirty discs. Of which nine discs of films and the rest are extras. To then thinking I've got issues with the Blu ray, ha just dreading 
Red in putting a, a blue ray in, like it did when it, when it started to affect as well. Lust for a vampire, the vampire lovers, twins of evil. <laughs> and I'm thinking that's you know that's what I'm thinking when they when they started playing up, Commando starts playing up. When when horror hostel starts playing up, when I could I, I never. Really got Britannia hopped off the bloody ground. It played once, twice. When that's when you know alarm bells were ringing. I thought you were right when you suggested we were probably about faulty laser. Man, well, um, I will let you. Uh, I'll let you. No, if I have uh, secured the House of the Long Shadows. It's not one of Pete Walker's best, but the fact it's got John Carradine, Sheila Keith, Julie P is good. It's got, um, I always forget his bloody name. Um, it was in that Asylum episode when he chops his wife up with the axe and puts her body into the chest freezer. And you've got Vincent Price, you've got Peter Cushing, you've got... Right, uh I'm going to curtail this now. It's nearly half past midnight. She's uh, now her alarm, obviously, because right. So, oh Jesus! Oh, uh, where I am with my viewing pleasure. Is uh, I'm gonna watch it again, but I'm up to Scars of Dracula and Taste of the Dracula, then AD 72, then the Satanic Rites, and then I, I might go back to the car again. And I watched Friday the 13th for a bit. Uh, right before I knock off, it's not the best uh, intro to like a what 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 do you think of the quick mock up that I did of the photograph? Well, oh, actually, it's a it's a it's a painting I nicked up of Google, and using Photoscape, I I selected three pictures with us on it, cropped it so it's just the head showing, and then you can transport transfer it on top of the uh, the original picture, which does, and then. Once that were done, I nixed this 30 second, 37 second <coughs> clip from a short, it's probably a short horror film on uh, on YouTube. Uh, and the fact that I just ripped the audio off and managed to just trim the music back to fit the length of the pictures. So that, so as soon as that, so as that finishes, which is like which is about thirty seconds or so, then you, then you add the video uh, in the same channel as the photograph. So you get a picture that like um, the Walnut and Ashdown Steam Company Film Reviews presents, and then you see, you see the, that picture. For, and then and then what? Well, as soon as that finishes with the background music. Boom. So I said to our last, I, I'm, I don't know what to do. I mean, it, there are tons and tons and tons and tons of people out there who are doing what they call reaction videos. The ten a penny on YouTube. And a lot of them now are what they're called, um, you can subscribe or you can become a Patreon. 
And if you if you become a Patreon, you get exclusive content not open to those who don't part with brass. Um, and there's a lot of people who do a lot of these review channels. I'm not sure they do the same or not, but as for you know me and you talk a lot about films. It'd be nice. Like I could do one about the the big hammer box set. I mean, I, I might do one myself and say, look, there's too much of that shit of, of Bacow Welch and people like her running around being chased like after fucking dinosaurs. There's far too many of them films in that box set for my liking. I don't mind them in years BC or she, but it's just, um, I think I could say like me and you could design, me and you could curate a much better ultimate hammer box set so we'll get some reviews done like i said it's it's, it's bargain bucket reviews i mean the the, the the logo that i put on the beginning the photograph of that diesel train with our pre pitch at the bottom with that spooky music over it that's about as high tech as it'll get it's not brilliant, but I say I'll oh, sod it. Right, I'm going to have to call Tomps. Um, we'll do a, a normal Just Be Dear on Saturday, because obviously it's the Saturday where you haven't worked at the chicken factory. Um, but uh, it won't be so bad if it won't put bakery run being being reinstated so we'll leave it now till Saturday uh, obviously after a suitable amount of time from when we both watched our videos without any uh, um, <coughs> without, without having to multitask or be diverted so we'll have sufficient time to watch his films or a film and then once that's done then we can uh, get into action right oh <coughs> TTF ends up see you later yeah so what what, uh, of what films have you watched of the ones I have recommended None of them, because they're inappropriate for now. The world doesn't know what handle means. They're, they're out of the loop. They're out of the loop. Uh, Paul Go the Clown. Mass and bigger. Oh, that was sudden background. Oh, this separate. Oh my, oh that's no good, that's no good. That's shite, ah that one. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> no that one. No. Nope. That's better. Move that cunt down there. <clears throat> oh. no, it's not. I'm blurring a little, a little bit. Not brilliant. Uh, try this one. Flattering. Yeah. It was that bastard. That's better. Right, so what, um, 
what what are your films? 